Good morning. I'm just going to run with a blue background for this video because since I made the additions I'm having lighting problems so you can see the shading here on this side and the extra uh, variation in the lighting so I can't do the transparency very well and give you that changing background. Anyways, this video is about this tray again. I made two additions to the tray itself, two modifications. So with those modifications I was using this divider card. Now I'm not happy with the white dividers so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the additions how I got it to this point where my envelopes are not sliding all over the place and then I have it's from several different types of food containers but it's the similar cardboard to what you get out of a cereal box I'm going to make new dividers for this so I'll show you them afterwards I'll show you one cut and then what the completed version is first is the modification there's a couple neat modifications I made to this to keep things from sliding around now one of the problems right now as you can see they can just slide right down you see that so I'm going to do something here now. I'll take all of this out. Oops. Turn the end over. Take some fairly rough sandpaper. This is 80 grit sandpaper. Those boards on the bottom, just the wider ones, not the center one. 35 millimeters wide. One. I need four. This is just a piece of foam. I lay that down there so I'm not getting glue all over everything. And I'm going to use Scotch photo mount. Stop there. 
Now, they don't slide forward, but they can tip forward. So the next step to fix that. What I'm going to do here is stand the divider up and put one of these strips of cardstock across so that I know it's in the right position. And then just staple it on. There, I have it complete. I notched along this top edge with my handsaw. Of course I have the sandpaper down there. And now, The dividers will stay exactly where I put them. And if I don't want those seeds to tip over and just leave a space in between, I've got an extra divider back here that I can take and put in there, either little eye. Now, hopefully, everything shows up nicely here. This tray is from here the very bottom of the ruler it comes to 92 millimeters. Cut off a piece like this. This cardboard I was saving mostly for fire starter. So it doesn't matter if I have wasted pieces, quote quote wasted pieces, because I'm just going to throw it in the uh, fire starter box anyway. What I'm going to do first is see exactly how wide it is, so I'll put my the edge of my ruler at the edge of the cardboard there, go 92 millimeters. Then I'll measure exactly what it is by putting a zero, and we've got uh, 97 millimeters. But when I do these dividers, I want them somewhat slanted because I want to make sure the bottom is touching the sandpaper down here, and then when they slide slant one way or the other, the top piece can it go into one of these notches. So 97 millimeters, we can go all the way to making them 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters deep. These parts are neat, neat because I can add the upper tab made from this tab. Now not all of the cardboard I have is like that. Now what I need to decide is how far out I want the tab to go. And one centimeter is good enough. It's ten and a half centimeters. So if I go thirteen centimeters or no, 12 and a half centimeters will do. So from the edge, I'm going to mark in one centimeter, go to 12 and a half and 11 and a half. And go down so far, one centimeter in, 
Well, uh, we don't need 12 and a half down there, we just need 11 and a half. That means when I cut along these lines that I'm making here now, and I'll make the top tab 3 centimeters. It's a good job I did put that 11 and a half down there because now I have something to line it up with. So how does that look for a divider for here? Let's take our utility knife and cut along it. There. Now I have the one divider. And it slightly leans. But this side is not getting into the uh, notch. So I'm going to have to cut off just a little bit. There, now we have it. So it's enough. We, uh, the force that I was putting on it, you don't need that much anyway. Now, what have I got here? Switch charge. I'll sort that out later. And then I will take the Sharpie and just write on there. So this one I write coal crops. And there we have it. That's our uh, divider. And I'll make enough for do, to do the rest and show you the finished version. There I have my dividers made. And I've written on the top. I have 20 something groupings here. I've grouped them into what now I will have several different varieties of. So it turns out to be beans, baking beans, beans, green beans, carrots and parsnip, coal crops, corn salad, eggplant, cucumber, herbs culinary, Herbs medicinal, lettuce, onion, peas, peppers, pumpkin, rutabaga and turnip, tomato, salad greens, squash, sunflowers, watermelon, zucchini, and general flowers. So now I will replace the white ones here. Oh yeah, I have four extra here for when I, if I decide to add categories. So my baking beans, I don't have a envelope style baking bean one yet, but I plan on making some so that, that way I can have a full sampling of all my seeds in this tray and I won't have to carry out the bigger containers. So that's the green beans, carrots and the parsnip, coal crops, corn and corn salad. In a previous video I mentioned that so far as I know there is no corn we can grow here but I found out that there, there is what's called a corn salad. It's apparently a salad green uh, maize or mash or something it's called which I have to track down. Eggplants, cucumbers, culinary herbs, medicinal herbs, lettuce, onions and shallots, peas, peppers, pumpkins, squash. Radish. Well, that looks 
looks lovely, doesn't it? Awesome. Thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and leave me a comment. I'll see you in the next video.